So we're out on the golf course, it's wedge review time. TaylorMade have launched a new high toe wedge and it's the high toe three. We're gonna to talk all about this wedge. We're gonna test it some different lights, see how the ball reacts and talk more about the high toe and how possibly this can benefit you and your short game shots. So I've got three wedges to test from TaylorMade, all high toe. We've got 50, 54, and a 58 degree. Now the 50 degree comes without the grooves all the way into the toe, and it's not as high on the toe section, but it comes under the high toe family. But that's more for your full shots. So we don't receive really the benefit of having those grooves to the end. So we're not going to refocus really too much on that particular wedge. From the 54 degree upwards in loft, we do see the grooves go all the way into the toe of the club, and then we see a really high toe section. That's the bit we're going to really focus on. So the benefits really what TaylorMade are saying with the high toe is versatility. With all those different types of lies that we get faced with out on the golf course, whether it's tight lies, fluffy lies, we're opening the face up, we've got lob shots, we're gonna hit it in low, all those different types. This is where these wedges are saying are very versatile on those different types of shots. So versatility is gonna start with the sole. So we've got the mill, mill grind sole, which we've seen in of, obviously other models of TaylorMade, beautiful sort of milling, an exact sole is what they're sort of saying. And a little bit different now in terms of this, how it sits to the ground. So we've got like a 10, 10 degree little chamfer at the front. So the lean edge sits closer to the ground, which is good for those real sort of tight lies. But sometimes then it's maybe not so good if you're a little bit steep on the ball, a little bit of a digger, it can get a little bit snagged up into the ground. But that's then when they offering some different bounce options. So the back of the sole is where the bounce is gonna to be to help you to get that club exiting out of that uh, turf through that impact position. Okay, so let's get the 58 degree out. We're approximately about 50 yards from this flag. Let's hit some shots into here and see how the ball reacts, see how it feels off the club face. So I think really with the high toe wedges, the first is the look to get your head around a little bit. It's a little bit different. Obviously there's a higher section in the high part of the club head in the toe obviously section there it just create a very sort of triangular shape up into that uh, toe section so it is a little bit of a different look a little bit of a rounded leading edge obviously the grooves go all the way to the edge so first things first is probably just to get used to the look when these types of wedges but there is some real key benefits for these which we're going to go into a little bit in later in this video that struck really good yeah, that sort of hop, hop, and just a little pull back there. Really nice connection. It seemed to flight out quite low. You could sort of feel it lower flight. You can feel the sort of spin on that uh, on the ball there. So that high pad weighted area lowers. Oh, sorry, high as that CG. You hit below that, it comes out a little bit lower, a little bit hotter, a little bit more spin. So as we flip the head over, we've got a beautiful bronze finish here, haven't we? But we've got the, the sort of ports here in the back where they've taken weight out and these ports will be different depths depending on the loft of the, of the wedge. So taking that weight out, reposition that weight more into this sort of high toe pad. You can see that little bit of extra material at the top of that high toe. That's where they're shifting that weight. So increasing the center of gravity up the club face. So when you strike below it, it comes out a little bit lower, but a little bit more spin on the ball. So all that we've seen before in a wedge, haven't we? You know, weight taken out, reposition up, higher in that CG location. TaylorMade have tested thousands of golfers, amateur golfers through fittings, and typically we'll see a strike pattern on the wedge to be a little bit in that toe section. So again, they are moving the weight into that toe to move the center of gravity a little bit that way, move it higher in the face to make sure those actual slight miss hits are performing better increasing that spin or maintaining that spin on those miss hits and the performance okay so you can clearly see they were stopping pretty juicy weren't they off that nice sort of tighter lie now we're going to move it into the rough just into this sort of first cut just sort of nestle it down a little bit and it's just been raining a little bit here this morning so it's a touch damp as well so this is a obviously the playing environment that we need to sort of get used to when out on the golf course you know we know that dampness between the grooves and the ball does help to reduce spin so this will be a good test so i've got a little bit of grass between the club face and the golf ball a little bit damp same length of shot let's see how this one comes out Oh, nearly hold that. 
Okay, so that's come out very, very nice. It's come out a little bit higher, actually. Obviously, I had to go to dig for that a tiny bit. It's landed, it hasn't spun and grabbed, obviously, like it would do off that cleaner lie, but it has stopped relatively quick. So, in relation to the high toe two wedge, which this has obviously taken over from, TaylorMade have introduced some different bounce angles and some higher bounce. So, there is actually a 13 degree bounce option now in a 60 degree head, which is uh, obviously quite a lot of loft. You maybe remember the high, or the big foot wedge it was called, wasn't it? Which had a really big, fat, wide sole, loads of bounce, and I think it was about 15 degrees of bounce then. Uh, which was really like a game improvement wedge, you know, really difficult to sort of fat the shot in a way because of the su super wide sole on it. This has still got the mill grind sole and still that 10 degree on that leading edge, so it sits quite nice and tight, but a little bit more bounce on the back edge just to maybe, again, get that uh, sole exiting out of that turf a little bit more smoothly. And of course, with a wedge, we've got to talk about the face, haven't we? And this is a raw face, as you'll see, we'll, t we'll peel off the the sticker when you purchase it it'll then start to weather and start to rust so trying to get roughness surface is what they're talking about we've got obviously maximum grooves there to create some spin we've got some raised rib sections between the grooves so little bumps actually that are raising off the club face again trying to get that surface roughness to get that grip on that golf ball so the reason they want to have it raw is so when they they don't have to, have to plate it. So when they plate it, that's going to round off those edges of the grooves a little bit. So leaving it unplated, obviously that raw finish, keeps the grooves at its real sharpness as they possibly can. Obviously over time that will weather and obviously create a little bit of grip as well. Okay, so let's put ourselves in a real delicate one now. Very short-sided, it's downhill. I've got very little green to work with. 58 degree, and these are the sort of shots we want to get a bit of, of control on, don't we? Obviously, we're not going to create spin now, but it's all about getting that little bit, that touch, that feel. Maybe see how that sole again just interacts. A little bit in the rough. Not a bad light, to be honest, but I've just got to get very delicate here. And I've played that pretty good, to be honest. Take that all day long. Okay, so just moving the other side of the green now. I've got more green to work with. I've got an uphill uh, sort of run to the flag now. So I can pitch this in a little bit lower, try and release it up that slope. So I've switched into my 50 degree option now. So I'm going to play this obviously a little bit different in the stance. Keep the hands forward and just let this sort of run out a little bit more. And again, not bad there, a little bit short, but I've left myself an uphill pop. Okay, so real fluffy line, very close to green. Want to get this some height on here, but it sat up quite a bit. And for me, this is where high toe really comes into its own. So typically, as I'm opening this club face up and we play this shot, we're going to work the club a little bit more across that golf ball, a little bit more out to win. So that typically promotes sometimes a little bit more of that toe strike. And the fact that it's sat up on a tufty bit, it's very easy to get right underneath it and strike that ball very much in that high toe area. So this is one of the good reasons why all these grooves run to the end, just in case we get certain lies like this. Again, it goes back to that versatility with all these different lies that we get faced with. It's trying to adapt to all those situations. And I actually threw that right underneath that as much as I could. You could definitely sort of feel it. And there you go, you can just see the little bit of grass left on there. So you can see a little bit in the toe and quite high in the club face for that particular shot. Okay, so high toe three wedge, it's a very good wedge there. Little bit of a quirky look, that might be something that you might not like or you might like. Again, that's probably for me a little bit more of a personal preference, but always go and try them, give them a chance. They feel really good off the club face. They create some good stopping power, as all these modern wedges do nowadays. Uh, but post comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Hi, Toe3. Hopefully catch up with you all very soon.